Welcome back to News Weekly. All right, my guest today is Kamla Shamsi. She is probably one of the most prolific authors in Pakistan. A new book, Burnt Shadows, is out now, available everywhere, and I highly recommend that you do get it. Kamla, thank you for being here so much. Thank you very much. Um, all right, Burnt Shadows. This is uh, your fifth book now, I believe. It is, which is a bit much, isn't it? Well, I you think. Know? Well, Stephen King managed to churn out something like forty at this point. It's true, so. but then you get words like churn. That's right. Exactly. Yes. So, you know, which okay. is fine if it's butter, but books are. Yeah. Fair enough. That's a reasonable <laughs> enough uh, c- uh, criticism of that. Now, this is actually a bit of a change I found. I've read mm. most of your previous books, and um, this starts off not in Pakistan or India, but in fact in Japan. Right. With the uh, atomic bomb falling, mm-hmm. and what prompted that? I mean, what made you kind of step outside South Asia and go mm. to the Far East? Well, I started with South Asia, and as much as I was thinking of India, Pakistan, and all the nuclear stuff, um, and I thought if you're going to talk nuclear, right then Japan is the obvious place to start. And so originally it was actually going to be a Pakistani character who had a German grandmother. Right. And the grandmother lived through Nagasaki. But we didn't really know much about her because her grandson was Pakistani. And then I thought, why was this Japanese woman in Pakistan? What was her story? And before I knew it, I was writing a book which started with her and sort oh. of continues on. So okay. I, you know, I didn't know I was going to do it until I was doing it. So is that is yeah. that how a lot of the stories start off with just an idea that kind of rolls downhill and becomes bigger than you thought it would be? Yeah, or? they all start with a, with a sort of very tiny image um, of one kind or another, and then it sort of goes all over the place. And this one really went all over the place because it's sixty years. It's you know four or five different countries, and because it's in four sections. As I was writing one section, I had no idea. So until very late in the book, I had no idea it would end in this kind of war and terror world. So then, basically, when you reach the ending, you're as surprised as the reader is, basically. Yeah, I write very, I write slowly in the beginning, and and as Type I go or along, right? Mac, Mac. Okay. Oh, Mac. Mac. Very good. Must very, be Mac. Very good. Um, Absolutely. But as I get further and further, I'm writing faster and faster because by then I'm so caught up in the story and I want to know what's going to happen, and the only way I can figure it out is to write it. Okay, and now now the critics have obviously really liked this one. Um, I've I've been reading online, mm-hmm. doing some research, and everybody has very kind things to say about it. You yourself are uh, something of a, in, in fact, very busy critic for the Guardian. Yeah. In fact, and I always wondered about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you critique lots of books that come out as soon as they come out. Do the authors ever send maybe a, a ten pound note in the book, and they're just like you know a little favorable yeah. review? Um. Give me a nice blurb. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Writers are are very, you know, because. Of course, I'm on both sides of the desk, so to speak. Right. Um, so no, you. In fact, if you you meet someone and you know they're reviewing your book, then you talk about everything but the book. Um, and also, of course, the the writers don't send it to you, so the Guardian will send me books. Right. So okay. someone sends it to the Guardian, and maybe they are ten maybe pounds in there, the and the pounds. Guardian is taking it out. I hadn't thought of that. I'll oh, have to take Guardian it up people. with them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, and I always wondered about this as well. You, mm. So you you get the books, you review them, and everything. Yeah. But you're an author. Mm as you mentioned yourself, and so does that make you go softer on the other author you're, because you're it just does, kind of yeah. like, I don't want someone to say it to me. The, there have been one or two cases where I've said, look, I know this person, and I I know I, I haven't read the book yet, maybe I love it, but if I don't, I know I won't be able to write freely in a critical way, so I'm not doing it. Okay. So there have been a couple of cases where I've done that. What uh, an undesy thing to do, by the way. I know, Absolutely. Um, but. I think what happens, it's not that I write uncritically. Um, I have a certain um, sympathy is in the word, but I know what it's like to spend years immersed in a book. Um, so I don't believe in, in being cruel because it sounds smart or because you can, I mean, there are times when sort of very dismissive, witty one-liners occur to me, and I think I'm, if I put that in, I'm only showing off, look how smart I am. Right. Uh, but to be f- fair to the writer, I mean, you, you have to be f- fair to the reader as well. You have to tell them. Here are the faults. Here are the failings. But um, I take no pleasure out of sort of ripping a book apart just to show how well I can do it. Uh, so but I have like a whole lot of work, by the way. <laughs> I really enjoy doing the stuff like that because you know when you write a novel, you're spending a couple of years on a single thing. Mm-hmm. And with a review, there's a sort of much more directed way of thinking. It's you get this book, you read it, and then in 750 words, it's part plot summary, it's part critique. Um, and it sort of really is a sort of good way to say, okay, you know, every writing thing doesn't have to be a two or three year it process. It is an art form in and of itself, a good review. Now, 
your genre has mm. been the kind of South Asian love story a bit, which has more over overtones mm. or or themes of the struggles within South Asia or at least Pakistan, Pakistan yeah. during the times of the stories. I would have mm -hmm. found that to be true. Mm. You ever think of stepping out, maybe doing a spy thriller kind of novel? Or I, well, you, know, you know, I always yearn yeah. for the Pakistani science fiction book. I'm still waiting for someone to write that. Yeah, you you may be waiting a little longer. Yeah, <laughs> but this one actually, the second half of, it, of the four sections in this, the first two have. Uh, a storyline that involves some kind of romantic entanglement. The second half doesn't, and the second half um, does actually. It doesn't. It's not a spy thriller, but you have, um, you know, men in the th in the theater of war and, and people okay. sort of escaping from those who are running after them. So it's got a little bit of that. Right. Yeah. And um, no UFOs though. No UFOs. Not uh, yet. I'll yeah. keep holding out hope, and then maybe in the next one. Maybe I don't know quite yet what will happen with the next one. So perhaps a UFO will land. Oh, that's right. That's if I'm right. ever stuck for a plot, where does this plot go? Just and then call, the UFO I'll tell you landed. UFO yeah. landed, yeah. And, and we can take it from there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now Pakistan's been going through a literary boom. You, I mean, you you've been there, right? The forefront <laughs> so of it. So long. All. I don't know what forefront. I've just been there a while. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> been like a lone figure standing there waving this this flag covered in words. And now all of a sudden, mm. you've got kids exploring mangoes. You've got the reluctant fundamentalist. You've got more books coming mm. out next year and the year right. after. Are we going to have to learn how to read if this keeps up? No, no. I think we can carry on ignoring books as we've been doing. Just because there are more of them, it just means we have to ignore them more. Right. So we'll have to get better at ignoring, perhaps. So the intellectual elite <laughs> basically will have to then buy them and use them to stack up well, higher. Well, there's there's a great line that I nowhere else in the world do I hear this line. But in Pakistan, a lot of people over the last ten years have been coming out to me and they say, "I've seen your book," <laughs> and you think. You know, wonderful. Have you read it? Have you bought? Have you read about it? Have you? No, I've seen it. It's like we know it exists. You well, know, don't ask us for anymore. If it makes you feel any better, yeah. I usually get. I've heard of your show. Well, there it's you go. It's a television show, yeah. and so there you yeah. go. Well, thank you, Kamla. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you very much. <laughs> that wraps up this edition of News Weekly. As always, send your feedback to newsweekly at dawnnews.tv. I've also uploaded a whole bunch of episodes to youtubecom newsweekly. So now go there and watch those episodes, and hopefully, I can get more visitors on my YouTube page than the kitten falling asleep clip. I'm Samisha. Thanks for watching.